Well, hey there, ladies and gentlemen. It's Mark with It's All About Racing. Today, I'm going to present to you a 143 scale Mini Champs Solver C29. That driven by Pedro de la Rosa in 2010. Now, I just got back from the historic racing classic at Road Atlanta, where I saw quite a few old cars. There were no Formula One cars there. Uh, not much to my surprise, but one can always hope. Had there been, this might have been one of them, as this is a BMW Sauber C29, which was developed for the 2010 Formula One season. The chassis back in 2010 was carbon fiber and honeycomb composite monocoque. And the engine in this car, despite the fact that it was a BMW Sauber, is a Ferrari Type 056 2,400cc naturally aspirated V8, and the transmission is a 7-speed semi-automatic sequential gearbox. Now, as you can see from over in the corner of this, the driver for this particular car was Pedro De La Rosa, just one of seven drivers to score in his first race. Unfortunately, he was replaced later in the season by Nick Heidfeld. The other driver, a driver that I am familiar with, is Kamul Kobayashi from Japan and he was in the number 23 car, this being the number 22. Now, the team competed in 19 races back in 2010, scored zero wins, podiums, and poles, but somehow finished eighth in the Constructors' Championship, instead of dead last. Quite a shock. And as you can see, as you look at this car, there's not a lot of sponsors on it. In fact, if any, and there's very few, because, quite frankly, at the beginning of the year, they started with zero sponsors. But as the year progressed, they gained sponsors such as Burger King, Zakata, Cortina, and others. Now, as I've mentioned, this is a 143 scale Mini Champs model. And I think it's overall a relatively good model. The livery is rather plain with the white and the black. But I think it shows a lot of I guess you could call them engineering details, such as the unique front wing, which is certainly quite a bit different from what you see today. The nose, with the wing suspended underneath it. Suspension looks a lot like what you see today, as does the entire shape of the body of the car. But of course, as you know, every year they're a little bit different, and somewhat more unique. Now, as for many champs, well, let me start with the positives. All in all, I think this compared to the 2000 model is much better as far as quality and attention to detail. I quite frankly thought the 2000 model, which I had, which I believe was a, a Red Bull, was more similar to today's Barago than any Mini Champs I would have ever imagined. This model, however, is not too bad. All in all, I think it is really, really good. Things that I still hate about Mini Champs, and quite frankly, you all, if you've seen my videos, you know, is I think the bases are absolutely awful. I think this base in particular, of all those that I've seen Mini Champs in the various scales, is the worst. It's cheap-looking, I absolutely hate the permanent back piece that you have, which is actually I found critical to holding the uh, the top of it, the acrylic jewel cover, in place so that it just doesn't fall over all the place. And it's really, really kind of hard. You have to do some work to uh, for it to fall out of your hands with it, but it does include an acrylic jewel cover, as you saw there. I, I think the black with the checker box... Uh, details on it just just really detract from the car there it's just awful uh and mini champs has been doing this for years and you you'd think you know they would have learned by now but apparently not particularly if people don't complain uh otherwise some of the things that i've noted with mini champs that i really don't like is that the aerials and the pitot tube that you see there they're not very fragile, they're not very petite, but, they, but they're unrealistically large and thick, 
again, so something you would expect from Brago if Brago does it, which actually they do uh, to some extent. Other details on it are quite good. I'd like to say that the, the decaling details are excellent, but there's not many decals on it. Uh, therefore, not a lot of room for error. And, and I think overall, the few decals that you do have on it are rather, rather good. I did remember one thing that I thought was especially sharp that I really like, and something that is is unique, I guess, in cars from this era, are the fact that you have the exhaust tubes, not in the back, but coming out of these side pods, whatever you want to call those things. And as I turn this around backwards, you can see that a little bit better. I think Mini Champs did a really, really good job with that. It looks good. It could have been cheap looking, and it would not have surprised me if it had been. Overall, I think the rear of the car looks good. Uh, suspension pieces are nice. Carbon fiber details are pretty good, even though they just they just plain look black from here. But I think these are some of the things that they did well. I particularly like this detail, this decal that you see on the uh, the rear of the wing, the mad croc with the red uh, crocodile on there is pretty cool looking. All in all, the paint and the finish are very very good. One thing I did not particularly like. And I thought the driver was really poorly done. And if you take a close look there, you can see that, eh, you know, the helmet's okay. It's simplistic, but the driver design, it's cheap. It's, eh, it's so-so. And for a model that's supposed to be premium quality, quite frankly, I think it's anything but. There's a good look at the steering wheel, and it's just black. It's black. Ugh. Okay. Now, can I think of anything else positive to say about this model? And as you can tell, guys, I'm just not a huge Mini Champ fan. Um, I'm, I'm really not. I mean, if, if you're going to pay top dollar for a car, buy a Spark. Don't buy a Mini Champs, in my opinion. I haven't really done a Mini Champ Spark comparison yet. I will. It's coming. Uh, it's easy to make. I mean, I've, I've compared Spark to virtually every other model in its range. Uh, the only... Model manufacturer, I think, that does a better job than Spark is that of LookSmart. And I do have one of those coming. Now, I did not pay a lot for this model. I think I got it for $8 and like $12 shipping. So for less than $20, uh, I didn't waste a whole lot of money on it. You know, thank God, because if I had paid a premium $50 or even $100, as they can cost, I would have really been disappointed with it. But that being said, there are my thoughts. Hope you've enjoyed this. Thanks for watching. Next car will be a sports car, and I'll see you then.